happy sabbath and good morning everyone so today we're going to be talking about the abcs of health with jesus and it is my prayer that in today's this devotion that we will see health and christ as one and would see how they're not separate and that the holy spirit would empower all of us to be able to apply um, principles for the benefit of now and for the future and for eternity. So let's set the scene. In the very beginning, when God made man, in Genesis 2 verse 7, he says, what well, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So God formed the body, he breathed into it, and those two things together make up the living soul. Now this soul is what we often talk about as the entity which interacts with God, you know, it's not dependent on how I feel, you know, the physical, they can take my body but they can't, you know, destroy me. But here in this verse it's very evident that body and breath make up our existence without our breath we're just dust just dust and without your body we you, you you're not alive and i say that to say that god has created us and our bodies as the vehicle by which we are to experience him as the vessel through which we experience him and carry out everything that he has us to do so it's important that we look after it. Now there are several health camps, um, unfortunately, and on both extremes, on one side, we have those who are very health conscious, maybe health reformers, you know, um, they believe in the health message and they're very good at what they eat and perhaps they choose not to associate or they um, are critical of other people because they might do the same or differently to what they think is right health wise and unfortunately health becomes the center and the overarching principle of your health enhancing your relationship with God and love for others is lost and that is sometimes evident in the way that people proclaim health now we have the other extreme and that's what people say you know health isn't really that important it's just my relationship with God that's important you know prayer obeying his word um, but I beg to differ because it's this body which we best use to glorify God or that we use to glorify him so without it being in best health without me having the clearest of mind I can't do my best for him in those spiritual activities which people consider very important. Let me give you a couple of examples to put that into, into practice. So while at university, I would get up and as we all sometimes we get up and when we have devotional try to pray, our minds are very groggy. This is getting up in the morning. But I found that when I had a glass of water, first thing when I woke up or prayed, had a glass of water, and better yet, went for a walk or did a workout, my mind was so much more clear and ready and focused to focus on the Word of God and the personal message which He had for me that day. Now, that was in short time, but over the long time or long period, my mind was clearer and better able to focus on academics on anything mental I had better concentration now this helped me to get up and to actually focus and ingest what God has to say to me and just a shout out to devotion everyone God has something to say to you every single morning to give you direction for your specific day shout out to devotions so persevere in it so our health and our spiritual lives are one. They, they, they complement one another. Now, let's get on to our ABCs now. So the first A is accept that Jesus wants you to be healthy. Now you might be saying, yeah, Lauren, we know that, we know that. But does that belief 
affect the way that you live now for our camp over here that says that you know health isn't that important let me tell you something so in third john 1 verse 2 the apostle is saying to the church beloved i pray you to prosper concerning all things and to be in good health just as your soul prospers so he desires yes for um, your soul your, your spiritual life to prosper but he specifically says for you to be in good health so it is biblical for you to be in good health not only that okay people might say that's the apostle what about God himself in Matthew 8 verse 1 and 2 we see where Jesus talks to a man who is ill and says will thou be made whole do you want to be made whole and throughout his whole ministry we see how he spends um, time healing whole villages there were whole villages where there was no sickness he spent time healing and dealing with the physical needs of people now I say accept that Jesus wants you to be whole because you might not think it's that important but I'm going to speak to a group of people now who might have had a lot of health challenges for a long period of time. So I myself have suffered with pain for some time and it can get tiring as much as you know that God wants you to be well. Your body and the fact that there might not be a resolution to your issue um, can cause you to get weary and for you to doubt that. But I'm here to encourage you to take up that faith, that belief that Jesus wants for you, for us to be healthy. Yeah? Um, and it is with that encouragement, if we know that the God of heaven wants for you to be healthy, how much motivation is that then to take up your resolutions for us to go forward? How much more encouragement is that when we're in the gym on our last legs and go, no, Jesus wants for me to be healthy? Um, that is a massive motivation. So A, I challenge us all to accept that Jesus wants us to be healthy and to incorporate that into our sets of beliefs let it impact the way we live our lives b now b is believe the fact that we cannot do it alone in luke 21 sorry john 21 um it tells the story of when peter went out with i think six other disciples and they went fishing and as they were fishing they went out all night not I think it was six of the disciples they went out all night and they caught nothing and they were coming back to the shore at morning and somebody shouted out to them children did you get any food did you get any meat and they said no imagine a whole night it's like well maybe so they might have thought I might as well sleep a whole night they've gone out and this person says, throw your net over to the right side. When they threw their net over to the right side, zero fish turned to 153 fish. And John said, that's Jesus. And indeed it was Jesus that told them that. But here in this example, we can see how Peter took it upon himself to go fishing and how Jesus turned up. He's made himself very real and he has blessed the activity. It goes to show that Jesus wants to bless things, that he, he can be there in things which aren't to do with, with explicitly spiritual. As in, our health might not always seem spiritual, but he wants to be there for us. And when we do things his way, at his direction, we can go from 0 to 153, from failure or no gains to many gains to unbelievable gains um i challenge you to think about how many times have you set a resolution yeah or have you tried to do something and you started and there was so much resistance to get through or you lost the willpower yeah and you set your new year's resolution and it never resolved it just crumbled so we cannot do things alone in John 15 verse 5 
Jesus says that I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So when we believe the fact that we can do nothing in our own strength, then we lean fully upon God and we we tune in and tap into that strength that is needed for the success of health, the success of anything. So I challenge us to believe this and I say believe so that it affects our actions. The third thing is cooperate with God in the small tasks. The Bible teaches principles of growth. We see in the New Testament where we're told about, first of all, you need spiritual milk and then you can eat meat. We're told in certain parables that in growth of food, first we have the blade and then the ear and then the full corn of ear. We see in even Daniel how they were first tested in, in issues of diet and then they were proven faithful enough to endure tests of standing up and loyalty to God. Now, if you're anything like me, you want to be perfect from the beginning and you despise the small things. But how can Jesus trust us with big things? Or not even trust us like he doesn't want to, but how can we expect to run if we can't even crawl yet? And this is where humility comes into it. And I've, I'm learning to be humble enough to be faithful in the small things. So I'm saying the third thing is C, cooperate with God in the small tasks. Bring your tasks to him and say, Jesus, help me to, to perfect the small things. Like just getting to bed on time or drinking enough water for the day because we will develop discipline and we will develop the motivation enough to address um, bigger issues. So a bit of a testimony. Um, As I said, I like to do things by myself and I I like things to be perfect. (laughs) Um, But over the years, as I've dealt with certain health challenges, I've leant upon my own or leaned upon my own understanding And while I thought, yeah, I can do the nutrition thing, like, I've done that. Holistically, everything that God has said, exercise, um, mental habits, um, temperance. I haven't always addressed those issues, but I've, you know, I'm pretty good with the diet thing. Now, my pain and experience hasn't really resolved, or it even though I was doing the diet thing I wasn't seeing complete resolution of my issues Um, and over the months I've seen where I have relied in my own strength and pride has led me to say well I want to come up with a solution you know then I can share it with others and I wonder how much of that has been to glorify God or has my pursuit been for me to come up with an answer but I'm learning to commit things to God and to be faithful in the small things like exercise exercises I'm not naturally an exerciser guys Um, but I'm really enjoying the process of depending upon God in these small things which everybody should be able to do Um, And he's teaching me the lessons of dependence upon him. And I can say that I've had periods without pain. There have been times without pain. Um, Now, I haven't exactly pinpointed it yet, but spiritually there is more peace as well because I'm learning that if God can help me to drink more water or if he can help me to get to bed on time or just to keep up in my exercise routine, then he can help me um, in bigger health challenges but also he cares enough to help me spiritually so let's go over the ABC health the first one is well is it except Jesus wants you to be healthy B is believe the fact that we cannot do it alone and C is cooperate with God in the small tasks 
So here are some tips and some ideas on how we can incorporate each of these into our life. But this week, I'm encouraging you, challenging you to prayerfully commit these to God, to ask his help for you to believe that he wants you to be healthy. Ask him what health looks like for you personally. When we talk about believing, confess where we have tried to do things in our own strength and ask for God's help to change. And when we talk about cooperating with him in the small things, prayerfully identify just one habit you know you need to improve on and make an action plan and commit it to God and then act on it in faith and watch him bless. Seek for his direction in those things if he's already given us in instruction and like they obeyed with the fish, God will bring success to your efforts. And lastly, be ready to share and to share your health testimony with somebody next week. So thanks guys and be blessed.